I'm Madeline Harvey, and thank you so much for joining me today, and welcome to day one of our seven-day Free Your Authentic Voice Challenge. In our lesson today, we're going to be talking about the tessitura, which means the sweet spot of your voice. So if you like today's video, please be sure to give it a thumbs up or click that subscribe button below. I would love to see you here more often. The video that you're about to see was taken as a clip from a live lesson that was shot earlier today. If you'd like to watch the entire live, then click on that link below and become a member of this channel. As a member, you'll have exclusive access to all of our lives that we do every Monday and Thursday at 12 p.m. Central Standard Time. If that is really late for you or really, really early, fear not. As a member, you'll also have exclusive access to our members only area with over 100 videos of voice lessons. So again, just click that join button below. It's only $4.99 a month and your contribution helps to support our channel. That way we can continue to deliver awesome content that's just for you. You ready to get started? Here we go. We've got to be able to have a definition for the word authenticity. It's kind of up there with like freedom and confidence. It's you know, it's one of those words that all of us are like, yes, please, I'd like I'd like some authenticity, but we don't quite know how to focus in on exactly what that means. So I'm going to offer you my definition of authenticity, but I also want to encourage you to kind of come up with your own as well, because it is you after all. Your voice is the instant manifestation, like when the sound comes out of your mouth. It is the instant manifestation of who you are as a person. Now that's very, oh, that's very big, isn't it? It's, it can be very stress inducing. We don't want any of that. We just want to honor that and go, you know what? That, that means that I need to sort of give it the attention that it deserves, that it commands. Because authenticity is one of those things that people, other people can sense. Matthew says to be authentic, and to be similar are similar, but not exactly identical. Yeah, yeah. Like my definition of authenticity is completely and unapologetically present. Like I'm just going to be present to what's going on. But at the same time, I'm going to do my best to not doctor any element of my own experience to sort of be befitting to someone else. Like let's say the audience. I don't want to be so scared or worried about what someone else is thinking about me that I've changed everything about me to try to fit what they're looking for, what I think they want. And I do think as artists, it's really, really difficult because you are comparing yourself to other artists of similar genre or of similar style. Or if you're in musical theater, you you're going for similar roles to someone else and you want to be able to present that in a way that when that person looks at you, they immediately think of that role. So you can really get lost in that because you're sort of changing who you are to fit a role rather than just authentically being yourself. So we're going to talk about this today and we're going to get into that. So my definition is completely and unapologetically present. These definitions matter. Um, yeah, just it's just a sound that requires the least amount of adjustment in order to maintain. Yeah, that's a more practical, practical way to think of it. Now, what do we have in our life that requires very little adjustment to maintain where the voice is concerned? I'll ask that again. What do we have in our everyday life that where the voice is concerned that requires very little adjustment in order to maintain? That's going to be our speech. And your speech is where we will begin this entire journey. This is where, this is what your voice uses as the frame of reference. So how you speak is like the master program that your voice uses to come into itself with singing. So we want to use that to our advantage. We want to find a way to kind of play with our speech in a way that we can include that in our music. So I always joke around. But I'm, I am serious. <laughs> I always joke that all singing is, is just sexy talking. 
Like, I really want that to get in your mind. Now, what do I mean by that? It's like all singing is, is just sexy talking. I want you to think of it as like, it's just stylized speech. Okay, like when you go in to sing a song, you want to be able to be in control in the same way that you would control your speech. You want to be confident in the same way that you would be confident in your speech. If you're scared of your voice, it's going to start to, that, that is going to be the manifestation. It's the instant manifestation of what is going on within you. So you want to use your speech as the starting place. So we're just going to take that nugget, that's a very big nugget, and we're going to put it over here for now. Because today's module is called the Tessitura. Now, for some of you guys, this will be a new word. But for most of you guys, this is a regular word we use all the live long day on our lives. So would anyone like to offer up a definition for what the Tessitura is? It's a fancy Italian word that pretty much means the sweet spot of the voice. If you guys want to say anything more, I'm completely open to, to hearing it. But the Tessitura is, in fact, the part of your voice that requires the least amount of adjustment in order to maintain. Now, again, this is where speech comes in handy. Most of us uh, speak with great enthusiasm, especially if we're drawn to being artistic. We will use rhythm, inflection, pitch, dynamics when we speak. <laughs> we'll use all those elements of music when we speak. So it's really important for us to be aware of that and bring that into our voice. But let's get right to the nitty gritty, the tessitura. I don't want to spend too much time with voice types per se, because that does tend to get confusing for some people, but I will mention it a little bit. It is very important that you know your voice type, partly because your vocal development will be like a droplet of water. It needs to be very concise and small and focused at the onset, and then you can sort of ripple out and expand into new areas. But it's cru so crucial, partly because of the confusion factor. A lot of singers are like, well, I can sing this, and I can sing this, and I can sing this, and I have like a five octave range. It's like, see how confusing that can become? It's, and I know that stress. I know the love of this seven day series was because I know that a lot of us as singers are trying to be everything in our voices. We're trying to compete with like really crazy vocalists, but I don't want that to be the, the, the nitty gritty of the seven day series. At the end of the series, I want you to be able to understand who you are as a singer, what you can use as a singer. So I think of it like this, like vocal performers will think about how do I pick a song that showcases the craziness of my voice. But do you see where that, that's a little twisty? I'll say that again. A lot of vocal performers that have a lot of capability are like sifting through catalogs of music, looking for the craziest song that's going to show off all this range. But what is their attention on themselves? They're going, what song is going to show me off? Me, 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 me. And audiences, mm, 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 not that interested, not that interested. Songwriters, on the other hand, producers, great storytellers will say, how can I utilize my voice to really encapsulate the song? So because they're trying to transcend that, they're trying to focus in on the audience and use their voice as a vehicle for the song, not so much for them. So I just want to offer little shifts in consciousness today. You want to use your speaking voice as your start place, because right now, for the most of us, it's the most undoctored part of our voice. So, and it's also what your voice uses as the reference, the frame of reference to sing. And then you also want to look at, you want to shift your attention away from having it be all about you, which can add so much stress to the process of performing into how can I be a vehicle for the song? How can I deliver this song? How can I tell that story in a way that people get lost in the story of the song? So just, just a couple things to think in mind. So let's get back to Tessitura. Let's try this right now. 
We're going to do a little slide, a little mini slide. It doesn't have to be grand old siren, but I just want to have you pick a vowel that you like. It could be any vowel that you want. A, E, O, A, I, A. Any vowel that you want, any one that you feel comfortable on. And we're just going to slide from comfortable low, doesn't have to be the lowest, but comfortable low, into through the middle, and then into sort of the upper. But again, I don't want you to be so about that upper that you're trying to full steam ahead into that upper part. It's just a little siren. So I'm going to go for, uh, I like uh, because it's really neutral. So if I go, uh, I'm paying attention, and it's not about how great I can do that. I'm just going to pay attention to where in that siren was my voice resting. Where was it actually just resting? So that I would like for you to do as well. So let's start low comfortable. Doesn't have to be lowest note. Uh, that's my lowest note. No, too low. Mm. Yeah. So uh, start a little higher and then just sort of move upward and see where your voice rests. Our voices are not going to rest in the same place. That's why it's really important that we pay attention. Here we go. Ready? Uh, not going to have enough gas to get back down. Again. Uh, Good. Could you spot where your voice was resting? Good. Now I know I'm going for, oh, it's a neutral vowel. If I change it to E, E, it's going to be a little different. So I like a uh, because of that neutrality. There's not a lot of shaping of the vocal tract. So let's try that one more time and then I'll reveal what notes we were doing. Uh, yeah. Uh, uh, uh. Good. Very good. Where did your voice feel like it was resting? Did it rest on the low? Did it rest in the mid? Or did it rest kind of sort of, we didn't go very high, kind of sort of in the high part? Good. Leave your comments below. <laughs> So we started E3 and kind of went up to like B or C5. Just mm, little mini slide, little mini slide. We're looking for the middle. Where did you guys feel that your voice was resting? My voice rested on the bottom. My voice loves the bottom, loves the bottom. Dania says the middle. Laura Lee says, I can't tell. Okay. So let's try it again. I'm going to give a couple of, let's do, let's see if we can do an octave. And again, if this is too low, because this is contralto alto territory, uh, if that's too low, then just hold off and jump back in when it feels a little bit more comfortable. We're looking for speech, y'all. So don't go, <laughs> like, don't, 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 don't engage that. Really keep that speech. This is about bringing your authentic voice and your tessitura into the same experiential place. So strive for... Ooh, strive for quality, but not quality. Like quality of experience, not quality of sound. We're really going to try to see if we can train your mind away from doing everything to get a certain sound. We want to engage coordination. So we're going to start here. We're just going to go the octave on a huh. Uh, Loves that, loves that right there. Okay, Nathan. Okay. Uh, 
Good. Now I'm really going to try to linger with you on that middle because I, I'm trying to interrupt the habitual uh, nature of the voice. The voice understands this is chest voice. This is head voice. Uh, uh, and we're not trying to do that. We're trying to see if we can highlight what's happening in the middle. What's authentic to you is the, the sound that takes the least amount of, of adjustment in order to maintain. So just keep that speech component in your mind. In that tessitura Kimberly hi friend oh I want to talk to you I'll talk to you later okay so yeah it takes the least amount of adjustment right there on that beat I'm still in my tessitura uh, uh, see how my voice is resting but as soon as we start gearing up to go higher it's like it's slowly making that adjustment in order to mix so let's try that again uh, And again, please do not make this pretty. Please do not make this pretty. If you do, ah, you're, you're bypassing the gift of this, this play. And that is to allow the voice to choose another type of coordination. If the voice is always just, uh, accustomed to going chest voice, head voice, it's like in terms of a voicing, like quality, you'll miss out on the speech element. And the whole point is to use your speech to feel your way through your voice. So here we go on that H, H-U-H. Uh... Uh... Don't doctor. Uh... trying to use my speech to try to find it rather than I don't talk like this uh -oh. so I, I would think of I always got to do that voicing in order to find my voice and we don't want to do that not now anyway Now, I know that H-U-H is probably like the hardest sound to choose because it offers you no help, none whatsoever. In fact, it has so little vowel demand on it uh, 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 that it's very exposing. It's extremely exposing. So I like it for that reason. And I like to also allow that my, my throat can, my throat, my jaw can just sort of hang, my tongue can hang, my throat can be neutral, and I can just sort of feel what's going on in those in-between notes. I can use like a E or an ah, yeah. You see my, the position my tongue takes? 
it flattens in the back which stabilizes the throat and that can really stabilize a lot of sound but that means that you've got to use that every time you sing and that's that's a little challenging Dwayne says thank you for explaining what it means by resting yeah it's mm, it means you don't got to do nothing sexy talking if it feels like you're just talking you've your voice is resting if it feels like you've got to engage it and work it and do all those things then that means you're kind of outside of your tessitura but you can you cannot expand your tessitura because it's a part of your voice type but you can overlap the, those shifts and those changes to where it sort of seems effortless and that's that's that is a quest for every singer over the life of the singer so it's it's for real it's for real so I just want to reiterate because I know that I'm I'm getting a little rambly and I want to I want to be so like concise in today's lesson Tessitura equals talking easy peasy lemon squeezy Tessitura equals talking so I have I have a tuner always got my tuner on and I'm just talking right here and I'm noticing that I'm fluctuating between a B and like E so I'm, I'm right within my Tessitura as I'm talking if I were up here if I were talking a little bit higher you know that would be like good if I was like speaking to children but you know like and it, it, that is not to say that you have to have a Disney princess voice you know to have a higher Tessitura but but you most often will <laughs> you most often will um, because it will take a lot of its cues from your speaking voice so I just want to use that as the clarifying space so where did you guys feel your tessitura was did you feel your voice was resting at the bottom in the middle or at the upper end if you're resting at the bottom and you're a female you're probably an alto doesn't mean you can't sing high no no but that also means it's where the best notes in your range are going to be best notes because again you don't have to do anything for them your voice is actually resting to generate them in the, if you're in the middle you're probably going to be a mezzo we didn't go very high we can go a little higher if you want um, for the sopranos but then that's you're gonna be a soprano so let's let's do let's extend a courtesy to the sopranos out there 